How do you develop a policy for integrating e-competences with the workplace or even with society? Well, INSEAD and the European Commission have been working on this issue, and we have the two principals with us today. Andre Richier is the principal administrator for the EC's DG Enterprise and Industry. Thanks for being here, Andre. Appreciate Thank you. It. And Bruno Lanvan is the uh, executive director of eLab. Thank you both. Why is it important uh, to add e-competence? Why, why are you working on this, this project? The main reason why we want to, to promote ICT is because ICT is a way to distinguish yourself from your competitors. It's a way to raise productivity and for that you need competence. So the question is not that much whether we grow and develop ICT which are specific for, for Europe, but how we can use the best technologies to develop solutions that of course uh, are linked to the needs of customers. Are we in an urgent situation? Is there a crisis going on or are we, how urgent is this? It is urgent in, uh, in three respects uh, at least. Uh, the first one is that uh, uh, Europe has decided already some time ago through the Lisbon strategy that it wanted to be a leader as a knowledge economy. And without knowledge skills, which include e-skills and ICT skills, this is not going to happen. There is a shortage of the kind of skills that are needed to fulfill Europe's ambition. The, the second reason why we indeed uh, see some urgency is that the, um, uh, there's so much potential. There's so many possibilities. There's so many good brains, uh, good companies, good organizations who could unleash their potential if only they had access to these, these talents and these competences. Um, and one of the, uh, the way in which this is formulated is it is our universities who are not churning out enough of those talents. It is our schools, it's our lifelong learning which is not up to par. And hence looking at curricula, looking at the ways in which these competences can be actually produced is, is absolutely key and urgent. And the third degree of urgency is because of the current crisis. The crisis to some extent is hiding some of those deficits because there are other sectors which are also uh, in crisis because uh, on one hand we have the demand which is going to lower levels than, than before and therefore this feeling of urgency being less felt by uh, industry or by analysts is all the more urgent because if we don't do it now in terms of crisis when recovery starts to take up the lag of Europe may be significant. So what skills are missing do you think? So we are looking at three types of skills. Uh, one is the, the basic uh, literacy skills, which have to do with mathematics, with science, etc. Uh, the second level is job related. And the third one is what we call skills for the global knowledge economy. The, the first one is one in which we estimated that Europe is getting a B minus or so. The second level of job related skills is one in which Europe gets a C. There is a lack of such skills, uh, there's a lack of engineers, there's a lack of programmers, there's a lack of architects. Uh, all are absolutely key for the IT industries and for their partners in, in business. The third one is even more worrying. We have uh, a significant lack uh, worldwide, but increasingly more so in Europe, of the people who are able to manage and oversee virtual teams across cultural and geographical borders, who can speak the different languages. Of course, this is very close to the heart and the DNA of, of INSEAD. Uh, so we're, we are very happy that there's a problem there to some extent, because we are on the supply side of this kind of management uh, uh, skills. Will that be helpful to you? What Bruno said uh, regarding the decline in the number of people graduating 18 in IT in terms also in the quality of the, the, the kind of uh, competence that they are getting, it's extremely worrying. And this is one of the reasons we are trying to, to bring together this uh, forward and also to foster partnership. I think Europe has not a very strong tradition of partnership between industry, academia and government, especially on this issue. So this conference and, and this study, the main goal is to identify key success factors, to identify best practice, and also to put together some recommendations on how we can move these things forward. Because the only way, of course, is to, to bring and establish this partnership to produce the kind of curriculum, to make it more attractive, to make it more relevant. Company complain that it takes up to six months or one year to get someone fully productive. That's mm -hmm. quite a lot. And if you take a small and medium-sized enterprise, they cannot afford. So the problem is not that much with the big ones, the Nokia, the SAP and the like, or even the big banks. I mean, the problem is 
for the average companies, for the startup, for the small and medium-sized enterprise. They cannot afford. So we need to ensure that there is a good supply of talented people. We have people also who are able to manage these teams. And for that, it requires basically collaboration. Collaboration between the different countries, collaboration between the different un uh, academic sectors and also with, uh, with industry. What do you think NCAD can bring to the table in terms of training or a curriculum change or something like that to meet some of the goals that Andres just stated? One thing that has been mentioned in the, in the conference uh, already um, is that the, uh, there's a lack of um, uh, excitement about curricula, about IT careers and prospects, etc. So um, also from the experience of INSEAD, we, we, we have quite a bit of experience of what makes students stick, what, what attracts them, what makes them enthusiastic about something which is being taught. And basically it boils down to three things. Uh, the first one is the curriculum itself. What are they learning in a good environment? Are they excited? Are they learning more than they were expected to learn from their, their fellow students and not just from the, the teachers? The second one is the um, ability of uh, the prospects for good jobs, that is employability. Are those curriculum actually leading to something exciting on, on the workplace? And beyond the job, there's the career aspect. That is, are those jobs leading to interesting careers? Is, is the, the curriculum and the, the learning leading to something that is translated into increased mobility, increased learning experiences, diversification in careers. So once we have all those three elements, and, and again, uh, INSEAD has some experience in that, the excitement of the curriculum, the employability, and the career prospects, we have a winning proposition. All right, let, let me end by asking you, you've done the research, you have the conference, what's the next step? Well, the next step is to ensure that we implement the, the recommendations. So there must be an engine, and I believe the engine cannot come purely from government. Again, this is an issue of partnership. So some of the best practice that we have identified, some of the key stakeholders from the ICT industry and from the ICT using industry, they were here, companies like ENI, um, there were many, uh, many people from, from different fields. I think what, what we need to ensure is that these people continue to work together on how we can implement and disseminate uh, these. So from our side, we can, we can offer is the appropriate framework conditions, funding, some policy support. But this, of course, this is an effort that stakeholders themselves must implement. And when we think about curriculum, which is the core of the, the project uh, that we are discussing today, we have to think about uh, the next generation of uh, courses, and this takes usually between one, two or three years. Mm. So depending on the country, depending on the place. So uh, this is why I think it's important to see uh, this partnership as something which must be a long-term cooperation. And, and Bruno, what's next for eLab and, and INSEAD? What next steps can you take? Well, as Andres said, the key word is implementation. That is, when we do this kind of studies, it's not uh, with the idea of doing an academic type of, of studies. It's with the ambition that somebody is going to use those results and turn it into, into action. In this case, we're trying to mobilize simultane simultaneously three groups of stakeholders, uh, educators, business, and government. And clearly, uh, the synergies with what the Commission is, is doing in so many different uh, areas, including in education, in innovation, etc., will be a key component. We also plan to uh, fully leverage our own involvement in other initiatives to bring the results of these studies to whoever is entitled to um, take action about it. Uh, that will include the European Business Summit in June, it will include our respective uh, leadership summits, etc. So um, just to spread the world, excite people, make them enthusiastic about wanting to be part of the action is what's on our agenda for the coming months. I think there is also a very good sign is the industry uh, has decided to set up an e-skills industry leadership board to contribute to implement the e-skills agenda. So you have already an engine to help delivering uh, the result and disseminating the result. And what is interesting for us, it's not only the ICT sector, the ICT companies, but also the ICT using companies because the co-chair of uh, this uh, eSkills ILB is on one side Microsoft, but also it's Daimler. So a leading uh, automotive uh, company which use massively uh, IT. 
So for us, it's uh, one good uh, element that proves that companies are very concerned by that and they want to help in further disseminating results and promoting this kind of projects and activities in the future. It's going to be an exciting time. Thank you both very much for being with us on NCAD Knowledge. Thank you. Thank you.